Earlier this year, on March 13th, 2013, in the Vatican, there was an announcement that we had a new Pope. Catholics from all over ascended upon Rome in St. Peter's Square, waiting with anticipation to see who the new Pope was. Also, Catholics from all over the world were glued to their televisions, waiting for a cardinal to come out and announce who the new Pope would be. The new Pope is, was Cardinal Bergoglio. He chose the name of Francis. So now we have Pope Francis, who came out and met everybody in the square. Why did Pope Francis choose that name? Well, in honor of St. Francis of Assisi. St. Francis loved the poor, just like Pope Francis does. St. Francis's life was fascinating, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about it today. He was born in 1181 in the town of Assisi, which is located in Italy. His mother and father were quite well off, and his father was a silk merchant, sold silk to people they used to make expensive clothing. So St. Francis grew up in a very comfortable home with nice clothes and plenty of food and was well provided for. He was very popular and had a lot of friends and would always go out on the town and spend lots of money. He lived a very worldly life. One day, the town of Assisi had a problem with another village in Italy and a war ensued. All of St. Francis and his friends joined the army to fight in the battle. Assisi lost, and all of them became POWs, prisoners of war. St. Francis stayed in jail for one year, and during that time in jail, he had a lot of time to contemplate and think about his life, and think about his life up until that time, about how foolish he had been, and how he had not been serious about his faith, and he hadn't deepened his relationship with God. When the year was over, and he was out of prison, all of his friends were excited to see him, but noticed that he'd undergone a tremendous change. The old partier St. Francis was gone, and there was a new, more contemplative, thoughtful St. Francis. In the past, he would spend lots of money on frivolous things, but now he gave his money to the poor. In the past, he would go out and party and enjoy having a great time, but now he would prefer to spend his time with poor people. And he used to like being around people all the time, but now that he was out, he would love to walk alone through the countryside. And he enjoyed that because he liked to look at all of the beautiful things that God had created. The tree, the sky, the earth, all of the animals, even looking at the rain, wondering how God could make that, or even the snow. And he applauded God for all of that. One day he was walking in the countryside and he walked into an old dilapidated chapel where he began to pray. All of a sudden he heard the voice and he looked up at a cross. It was a painting of Jesus on a cross and it spoke to St. Francis. Jesus looked at him and he said, Francis, Francis, Francis. Repair my house that has now fallen. Francis thought about that and tried to think of how he could get the money to make all the repairs to that church. And then he realized he could take stuff from his father's business, all those nice clothes, and sell them and raise money to pay for the repairs. He did that and his father was furious, beat him and threw him into a court. And in that court, the head of it was the bishop. His father told the bishop everything his son had done. Francis stood there, looking at his father and said, Fine, father, I am no longer your son. Everything you have given me, I give back to you. 
Francis took off all of his clothes, and naked he walked out of his family for life. St. Francis lived alone and lived as a beggar from then on, helping poor people. And he would beg for food. He would travel from place to place, and he enjoyed preaching to people. Before, people thought he was crazy and ridiculed him. But now, people started to become interested in what he had to say about God and God's love. Francis loved to talk about poverty. He remember hearing a priest talk about Jesus' teachings, where he said, go preach. You don't need money. You don't need clothes. You don't need a walking stick. You don't need anything. So St. Francis followed that teaching. He always lived in poverty. He had nothing, and he went around and preached. Some men who really liked him started to follow him because they liked what he had to say. They formed a community and lived together, and they became what now is known as the Franciscan Order. Francis and his group, or order, went to Rome to meet the Pope for his blessing. When they arrived, the Pope took one look at them, and because of their impoverished look, he sent them away and simply dismissed them. Later that night, while the Pope slept, he had a dream. He saw his cathedral, St. John Lateran Basilica. In his dream, the Pope saw the basilica crumbling and falling, but yet he saw St. Francis underneath it standing, holding it up. And that day he knew that God was using Francis to help the church because at that time, the church was experiencing so much turmoil. I have so many stories about St. Francis. Some of them are, might be true, some of them might be made up. I don't know, but they're great stories. So I've picked three for you today. The first one refers to how St. Francis loved nature. He adored animals and flowers. And it seemed that even wild animals were not afraid of him. The story says that, that the birds would fly and land on St. Francis's shoulder. And that St. Francis loved to even preach to the birds about how wonderful God was. And it seemed that all the birds would sit there patiently and listen and understand him. And when he was finished, he would say, well, now it's time to praise God. And all the birds would start singing and chirping in harmony. That's kind of amazing. Another story talks about how the village of Quibo had some serious problems with a wolf who would come into the village and hurt people and eat animals. And all the villagers were scared of this wolf. St. Francis visited the village and he went on a quest looking for that wolf. And when he found him, he scolded him. And it seemed that the wolf understood what St. Francis was saying because he looked so shameful. St. Francis told him, you will not hurt another soul, and in exchange the village will take care of you and feed you so that you no longer go hungry. And from that moment on, the wolf never hurt another soul, and the village took care of him. Another story is how when St. Francis passed away, people looked to the skies and were amazed that the sky was filled with birds, all flying in the shape of a cross. St. Francis is one of the most revered and popular saints in the Catholic Church. It's possible that his life story inspires us in three different ways. First, that we need to live life more simply. Second, that we need to focus our attention on helping the poor and the sick. And that third, we need to enjoy nature because that is a gift from God and we need to enjoy it and appreciate the world. May God bless you.